University of Nottingham. So, over to you, Tommy. That's great. Thank you very much, Steve. Okay, if I bring up the first slide here, you'll see that. Yeah, I think we can skip that and go straight to the content of the session. Um, so, I'll, I'll turn off the video, actually. You don't, you don't need to see me for this, you just need to hear me. Um, so, for the next uh, 30 minutes, 35 minutes, we'll be talking a bit about what NFC actually is, new field communication, in particular in relation to its use in smartphones. We'll then be talking a bit about the background to a project, the background to how Simon and I met. Simon will then be going on talking about um, some of the uses that we've had for near field communication and talking a bit about uh, some of the posters and some of the ways that his students have used, have used NFC. Okay, so, oops, sorry. I suppose, can you let me know uh, who has heard of NFC? I think if you can just put your hands up. I think if that's possible. Yep, we've got Jenny, James, David. Okay, so that's not bad. And Alex as well. Brilliant. That's interesting because the first time we gave this talk and we asked, has anyone heard of NFC? It was a case, you know, what's it no, Never heard of it, don't know what it is. So it's obviously gaining some traction. So we probably, oops, we probably began to see this uh, sign appear, usually in uh, bizarrely coffee shops over here in the UK, and uh, really denotes a new form of payment using your smartphone. So basically, you can uh, rather than use, say, like a credit card with a chip in it, or you know, some other kind of payment option, you literally just swipe your uh, your NFC enabled smartphone uh, to pay to pay for anything, pay for coffee, pay for whatever. Uh, so that's that's the that's the sort of big use for this at the moment. This is uh, this is what the businesses are getting into. But another option is to use it with um, posters. So you can see here the skills basically holding up a smartphone to a poster, and a smartphone's interacting with that poster, and uh, just downloading information. Another way is for uh, another way to use this technology is between smartphones. So you can actually share information by literally touching two smartphones together. When you touch the two smartphones, it opens up a Bluetooth connection, and you can share files, you can share uh, messages, whatever. So it's got, it's got a very range of uses. Now, um, what we'll be talking about mostly is what's called NFC tags. And these are literally just little chips that you can pick up, as you can see here, from Amazon. Um, that's, that's actually I think that's a good point about the security. We won't be covering that today, actually, but I think we can talk about it in a follow-up session. Um, yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that, but it's a good point. But to get back to the tags, um, you can pick these up, let's say, they're about 50 pence each, and, all the, and they literally just store a bit of text message worth of data. So they can be used to store links, and short text message, that kind of thing. Now, at this stage, you're probably thinking, well, this is basically a glorified QR code. And I suppose to an extent, uh, it is, they, have a, they have similar they have similar purposes, and that's to share information and really just kind of interact with the real world. You know, it's just ways for you to um, interact real world objects and get information from them. So if we just think about some of the differences here. So the nice thing about little NFC chips is you can hide them. So you can literally just attach them to objects, attach them to posters, whatever. You can just you can basically hide them from the viewer. Now, if you look at the QR codes, um, I think the, the first thing that put um, Simon and I off using them was that they look ugly. I mean, they look terrible. It's quite obvious when you see a QR code. It's like, right, that's a QR code. But another real downfall is that you can't overwrite them. There are ways around this that are quite technical. 
But in general, you can't overwrite the tags. Once you've printed off a QR code, that's it. When you're using the um, NFC tags, you can just rewrite them. So once you finish with them, have some data right, you can, you can just rewrite it. Um, NFC, like I say, can store around 160 bytes of information. So that's about the same as a text message or a tweet. With, um, with QR codes, you can actually store more than 160 bytes, but not too much more. So that's, I suppose that's one thing to consider. So I'll talk a little bit about the background and how I came to use um, NFC tags. So I'm working on a project called uh, Toponimo which is basically a language learning journal that's, uh, I'll actually get through this, I've got some songs on this. Um, it's a language learning journal for English language learners. Uh, okay, so users can log in, log into this application using Facebook or uh, a pre-shared key. And they have their own journal screen. So these are words that, um, They've uh, either added directly using this screen here, so you can literally just put words directly into the journal. We automatically download um, definitions, uh, part of speech, that kind of thing, directly to the device. But perhaps the most the more interesting part is learners can uh, discover language from nearby places, so they can search nearby. You can see here where this is Lolita, with Boots, Zeni here, Asda, that kind of thing. And when you click on the location, they're given the list of words that are attached to that location. And again, they can collect, uh, they can uh, add information, they can even add little drawings. And anything they do will be shared with that location. So next time someone walks into Asda or whatever, they'd be able to view what that, um, that person has added. Now, there's a, there's a bit of a problem here, and this wasn't really something I'd thought of too much until I started testing it. But if we get back to these slides, you can see we're talking about, um, I suppose, context at the actual sort of broad location level. Yeah, so think about, say, as the long eating as is huge. He's saying to be speaking. Absolutely huge. I and mean, if you look at, say, inside Sainsbury's, if someone say adding the word butter, it's very difficult for them to be specific. So we had to rethink this and think, okay, how can we, um, I suppose, identify objects rather than locations? And I think I'm going to hand over to Simon now because he's going to talk a bit about how we've done that so far. Okay, over to you, Simon. Hi there. Um, yeah, thanks, Tommy. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, for those who don't know me, um, I've been teaching English as a foreign language um, for 25 years now. And um, during this part of the webinar, uh, I just want to tell you a bit about how uh, the NFC mobile phones are being used um, at uh, Central College, and um, we'll uh, discuss the uh, collaborative tasks we created, such as the um, vocabulary scavenger hunts and the um, interactive uh, marketing posters using the uh, NFC tags, uh, which our business English students uh, have produced and then displayed and presented uh, to, to other groups. Um, so, here you can see a picture of one of our students just holding up the, um, in this case it's an Android phone, to the uh, poster. Uh, and um, this was one of the first activities we actually created for our um, students. Uh, so small groups of our international language learners were required to navigate around the college via nine posters we created embedded with the NFC tags. So we stuck the NFC tags just underneath the poster. 
these interactive posters directed the student's smartphone to access word definitions hosted on um, Tommy's Toponimo server. So the students had to make collaborative decisions regarding the most appropriate meaning of the word and the relevance to its uh, context. Now, if we just go to the next slide, we, um, we gave each member of the team a role. We had um, the scribe, they recorded um, uh, the written information asked during the activity. So each time they went to a new poster, they had a different activity uh, to do. So everyone was really involved. Um, you had the uh, collector. That was the person who um, usually owned uh, the um, the Android, uh, the uh, NFC-enabled devices, and um, there was the uh, the reader. You can see there the girl holding the uh, the cards. In fact, these teams worked with a set of nine cards divided into three sections. The first section was the number of the word to be collected, corresponding to the poster to be found. Uh, the second part was the action that our students needed uh, to do, such as uh, take a photo or write down a definition. And the final part, uh, the reader uh, read out to the others um, uh, to, direct, to direct them to the next uh, poster uh, located uh, around the, uh, the college. So um, let's move on. Yeah, uh, here we've got a picture of um, them, uh, the business students, um, in fact, negotiating the best uh, meaning. In fact, one of, one of the hurdles, of course, with this uh, project uh, was that um, uh, not all of our students uh, had these NFC-enabled um, uh, phones. But in some ways, it, it, it proved an asset because uh, it, 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 it fostered collaboration. Um, you know, as only one third of the students had mobile phones that could read the tags, this meant the students needed to work together uh, and we put them in teams of three and four who actually shared the phone. So it became a lot more collaborative uh, than our original scavenger hunts that used the QR codes. And um, our students were focusing more on the technology than the task with these. Uh, NFC works really seamlessly and elegantly. So yeah, what worked well when our students were working together in these small groups was the amount of negotiation of meaning that took place when looking up uh, the vocabulary and deciding on the um, best, de de best definitions. And that's uh, really, really fundamental to learning uh, a second language. Um, there was a lot of speaking uh, and teamwork involved in completing uh, the scavenger hunts. and. Um, it seemed to completely engage the learners in the task. And um, although Tommy and I were on hand during the scavenger hunts, we thought they'd have loads of problems, uh, technical problems, or not understand what to do. They needed very little uh, assistant, uh, uh, assistance and didn't really ask, ask us. We just went around taking a few photos here and there. Uh, they preferred to work it out themselves, so it was great to see that uh, happening. Um, let's just move on. Yeah, uh, I think a good way actually to describe how our scavenger hunt worked in practice is to show you a short video. So it lasts a, a minute and a half, uh, and um, what we'll do. I think uh, Steve is going to insert the URL so you'll be able to watch it in the whiteboard area 
and we can also put a link in the chat area I think if you uh, would like to put that in a, a separate browser window um, so uh, that's great thanks uh, Steve for that This one is uh, using Vimeo and it isn't an auto play, so you just have to click on the play button if you haven't already. It lasts one and a half minutes, so we'll be back in one and a half minutes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Hi. Um, great. We're back to the slide section. I just want to go back one slide actually, uh, and um, just say that uh, I briefly mentioned earlier that our uh, project first started out by developing these scavenger hunts using uh, QR codes, which uh, I said was um, quite. Uh, time consuming for the students and the students didn't really um, they didn't find the process of the reading of the QR codes very motivating and sometimes quite difficult so uh, it was decided that uh, we use the NFC codes to produce these um, scavenger hunts and um, there's a number of advantages using uh, this, these technologies. Um, one, that they can be hidden very easily and uh, elegantly. And, um, uh, and of course, as you saw, a little bit more uh, aesthetic than the QR codes. And um, although they're a bit more expensive initially, uh, they can be reused and uh, rewritten um, and somebody in the chat I was reading talked about the security of uh, NFC uh, these NFC tags and uh, what Tommy and I uh, want to work on in the future is they're easy to recode remotely so a web address or bookmark can be locked and the URL redirected remotely um, via via a browser, and hopefully Tommy uh, will be, ex be able to explain this process in our hands-on workshop in a little bit more um, uh, detail. But 
by locking the tag, however, it means that the students can't go around college reprogramming them. So that was an important security uh, aspect. But during the whole time that we had the posters up, which it's been quite a long time, we have found no students actually tampering with the uh, tags, whether that's just because uh, uh, we've got good students who or the students actually don't know how to actually encode them. But I'm looking forward, and Tommy, to uh, to, to, to seeing that in the hands-on work, uh, workshop there. So a um, lot of uh, post-task uh, activities, I think, naturally followed on from these uh, um, scavenger hunts, uh, not only uh, to the vocabulary they collected, but the language they used while participating uh, and negotiating uh, the meaning of these words. So uh, just to conclude about the scavenger hunts, there were uh, a few reasons I really thought that these scavenger hunts were effective. Uh, and I think a great usage of, of this kind of thing would be an induction and orientate, or the orientation of uh, new students, or in fact other themed activities, uh, health and safety or, or whatever uh, uh, you want your students to, to do. But what I liked most really was this um, kind of enhanced collaboration it fostered among our learners and gaining a real deep uh, contextualization of um, English language, and um, which really they can't get if they're just sitting by uh, behind the desk in the classroom uh, using a course book. And uh, Tommy often says in our presentations that it, it's not the learner who, uh, well, it, it's actually the learner who is my mobile. Mobile learning is not just the um, uh, mobile devices, not just the technology. So some of the findings um, uh, on the questionnaires we gave our uh, learners after the scavenger quest was the, um, uh, we, we actually found that 92% uh, of the students already looked up words on their mobile phone uh, actually in class. So there was definitely a movement for learners to come in and bring bring in their um, uh, uh, bring in their own mobile devices, which is, you know, five or six years ago students weren't doing that. Um, yeah. Uh, so at the time of running the first vocabulary quest, it, this was in December 2012, that's why all our <laughs> photos have got our uh, um, students dressed up in really heavy coats. Uh, one third of the language learners regularly carried an NFC-enabled device to college. Uh, our students come from kind of fairly wealthy backgrounds, and often they had an iPad plus an Android or a BlackBerry. So. Uh, one of the, uh, I, I'm sure this is going to uh, pick up in the future as well. So although it, it, it is probably one of the main criticisms of our vocabulary scavenger quest is that uh, not everybody uh, could use it in their own personal phone, but there's nothing to stop us uh, putting QR codes there as well. Uh, and we did that for one, um, one of the tests. So um, students mentioned, actually, in the focus groups we ran, that uh, these um, uh, vocabulary uh, activities were a lot more uh, motivating, more fun than comparable classrooms, classroom activities using uh, traditional uh, activities there. OK, I just what I think we, OK. We are we are confused. <laughs> Is that safe? Anyway, uh, let let me go back to um, let me let me tell you a little bit about another project we um, we ran a logical 
progression, uh, a logical teaching and learning activity was to get students actually to code the tags themselves. And our business English students were given the task of producing interactive marketing posters using uh, the NFC tags. And um, these students then displayed and presented their posters uh, to other groups who had uh, different, um, different levels. So um, uh, let's move on. Yeah. These are our business students. And uh, we introduced this poster uh, making session with our business English students doing a unit on marketing. And we went through the process of making ads and posters. And we discussed what makes a good poster, you know, how to format, how to uh, do the text boxes, what colors should they use, and, um, you know, with the uh, what, 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 uh, what they should be using, the Word or the PowerPoint publisher. So um, in this session, we allowed the students to choose their own theme for the posters. But I think it would have worked just as well, especially for lower level students, if we created like, business scenarios and got them to produce a collaborative poster. This time, they've done it individually. And we, um, in this case, we just asked students to to present a business they are working in or have worked in. Some of them, however, were pre-experienced uh, students. They hadn't worked before, so we asked them to uh, create a poster on um, how to learn a language. And um, Tommy and I modeled this. We demonstrated the different methods that uh, could be used to make these interactive posters. And we showed them how to uh, do these uh, QR codes and um, NFC tags. OK, so um, let's move on. OK, collaboration. Yeah, um, yeah, so our students printed out the posters on A3 or A4. Uh, they laminated it. And um, then they explained the posters to other students. And um, finally, they made a big display for students of other groups, giving a, a big mix of uh, levels. And I just really want to show you some of the uh, work that our students have uh, created. So uh, yeah, um, Dolce, an Italian restaurant, one of the students worked in. Um, she worked uh, part time in this restaurant, and she linked it to a um, the menu. And uh, in fact, I think she probably sold a few places at the restaurant. But um, uh, next one, yeah, uh, Hatem from Saudi Arabia worked in the dental business, and he gave some really useful dental advice to other students when. Um, showing uh, other students, and that was really useful. Um, I had Stefano here, an, an Italian, of course, a great designer, uh, uh, and very interested. He, he's very interested to find a job actually working in languages, and he made a little publicity for our uh, college, which we still are using at the moment. Um, yeah, uh, the next one was uh, uh, a student uh, who um, uh, actually worked a, a, as a translator. And, um, uh, and produced this. Let's have a look. Ah, yes. Um, just before we. Um, watch another very short video, uh, which, again, the same system as before. It's What we've done is just shown you a few clips of our students uh, interacting uh, together and uh, how, um, 
uh, yeah. So what I'd like to do is ask um, Steve if he could just uh, bring up the. Um, I don't. Uh, uh, I don't know if Steve has got the uh, num uh, the uh, link for this second video. Um, yes, if you just give a second, I'll, I'll paste that one in. Excellent. Thanks very much. Once again, this isn't an auto start, so you just have to click on play. We'll start in just over two and a half minutes again. Thank you. Hello there. Yeah, back again. Okay. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little uh, video. It was, um, you know, I thought the lower level students um, were very motivated in not only asking questions about the interactive posters and the NFC tags, but also about the work and life of the other students, which was um, really good to see there. And uh, I just felt that the activity created a really relaxed environment and um, a good link between informal and formal language and uh, I thought the students were more willing to practice their English in a two-way dialogue uh, between students of different levels and you saw one of the students there uh, not being able to, she had to kind of explain some of the words that the lower level students didn't understand and in a way became teachers themselves. Um, so yeah, they found it um, really uh, motivating, uh, engaging uh, and I think they enjoyed this two-way uh, process and hearing the explanations, not just from the teachers, but from their own, uh, own classmates. So, um, let's see what else we've got. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, uh, well, the students actually had, we, we had a little focus session after, and uh, we wrote down a few quotes from some of our students and um, Hatem, he said, I didn't feel nervous when I gave the poster presentation and I, I could explain what I want to say to others. So, yeah, Hatem, a little bit shyer than the others, probably a little bit less willing to speak in front of uh, a big, uh, the whole, uh, the whole class. Um, yeah, teachers also found the smart, board pro smart poster project effective in promoting active participation uh, outside the traditional 
environment of the desks and chairs uh, and pro pro provided the opportunity to mix these students from different language levels which we never use well we never do really uh, so a really good bridge between this informal and academic language and uh, you know, just to build up self-confidence -com and uh, critical thinking uh, and a bit more autonomy with the students which uh, uh, we, we, we thought was good. Um, yeah, Hatem again. Um, so during the focus groups uh, we collected the, the thoughts, uh, the Mohammed actually who was listening to Hatem had actually a, a tooth problem and he was scared to go to the dentist and actually he quoted, he said the posters are really useful to exchange um, knowledge because it's uh, clearness and simpleness and um, they could understand by looking and hearing the uh, explanations. I, I've got a load of quotes so I won't read them all out but um, Yeah, I got good advice. I asked the questions I wanted. I wanted. I just think, uh, you know, I really want to continue this project with Tommy, but I think we need to do a little bit more uh, research and develop a clearer picture of the um, strengths and weaknesses of these uh, activities and uh, the potential value of these exercises in second language. Uh, classroom and, and you know move it actually outside the college with Tommy's uh, Topolino device. So um, uh, the poster project, yeah, uh, both thematic and task based and uh, can be used in a, a wide range of classes. Um, yeah, let's see what other slides we've got. We spoke naturally. Yeah, poster making tasks provide students with more opportunities to communicate in English rather than have their head buried in their course books. So help, really help self-confidence there. Um, I think we are approaching, we've got five minutes left I think, so I think we'll just move on to some questions and answers and I hope Tommy and I will be able to uh, answer for you in the um, uh, in the uh, chat area or if anybody would like to to speak using the uh, the, the platform yeah uh, yes Steve we'll be doing a hands-on session uh, face to face and hopefully uh, get um, uh, get the 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 participants here to maybe create their own posters or or create bookmarks um, lots of activities we we could do uh, but really as well an opportunity to discuss the potential of using these um, personal mobile devices in your classes and we'll uh, experiment with the equipment we've we've been using uh, during the project um, yeah Yeah, in the workshop sessions you can bring your own phones if they are NFC enabled and if you're not too sure we can uh, have a look for you to see uh, it's often you need to go into the settings and enable this function. Yeah, that's right Tommy, we'll, we'll bring some along. Some of the um, 
Android uh, Android 7 tablets as well, which are a bit larger, so and also they are NFC enabled. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Simon and Tommy. Uh, some really interesting thoughts into there, into the use of NFC, and maybe the future of, of things like uh, QR coding and augmented reality. So uh, if you could all just show your appreciation for that, thank you very much. Um, what we will be doing after this session is we'll be putting all these resources onto our uh, Moodle platform so you'll be able to kind of find the recording for this session as well as links to other resources on there and uh, we'll be updating that uh, pretty soon. If you are interested we are into our final day of our online uh, part of the conference and we have two more sessions left. First of all we have an insight into technology and the common inspection framework where we'll be looking at uh, the new or it's about a year old I suppose process of offset inspections and how technology uh, has is involved in that and then the uh, the final session is with Joe Batson who is in the room at the moment so hi Joe um, and she will be uh, kind of sharing her story of how they've gone about trying to implement BYOD and mobile devices at Leicester College. So uh, a nice little insight into more of, okay, we've got all these, how do we get it into kind of teaching and learning? So that would be good. You can you can uh, go through these using the link that you've got on here and, and oh, I should say you should um, go through that link that, uh, on there, the insight link so then we have a record of who you are. Um, as mentioned in the text chats, we have our face-to-face -face workshops next week. The uh, one will be in Leicester on Tuesday and then Nottingham on Wednesday, both are the same, so it's whichever is more convenient to yourself. Uh, please book on there and Simon and Tommy will be there to give you a hands-on. We've tr gone for the flipped approach uh, with this session which is information in this online session and then it's kind of get your hands all dirty and mucky in our online session next week. So really have a go in there. Dave Andrews looks like he's already taken the first step which is buy some of those tags so that's uh, good for you. Okay, uh, if you need any support, so we are the Just Regional Support Centre, uh, we're here to help. We service East Midlands, there are uh, RSCs throughout the whole country or all the UK countries, so we, c we can help out with any of those things. And with that said, I'd like to thank you all for, for listening in and hope you have fun uh, trying out NFC. So all the best and thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Bye.